Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Social Media Today, brought to you by Social Cycle. We talk about all things social media, news, tips, tricks, and hacks to help you get the full advantage of social media. I'm your host, Mohit. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you, Quinn, for joining me on another episode of Social Media Today. Uh, my friend here, Quinn, he's a very dear friend of mine. We actually met on Twitter. Uh, but Quinn, I have a lot of good things to say. Why don't you fill in the gaps for the audience? What's up, guys? Uh, my name's Quinn. Um, yeah, met Mohit on Twitter. Um, awesome place uh, to to network in general. Um, I think you meet a lot of like-minded individuals. So super special place, at least for me. Uh, when you think about like Instagram and stuff like that, it's it's a little bit more superficial in, in my opinion. So on Twitter, people opt to put out good quality tweets so then you really know who they are um, and you get to know people. So yeah, we met on there. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we I think the first time we met, we had like an hour and 30 minute call just about like real estate, social media growth, all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like right off the bat, we hit it off. But Quinn, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Like, what do you do? What's sort of like your story? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, I went to Michigan State. Um, I studied economics. I'm from San Diego. Um, I went to Michigan State because I felt like I needed to get out of the bubble of San Diego, right? Experience real life. Um, and I was able to do that. Met a ton of cool people in Wisconsin, Chicago, all that good stuff. Um, I was really interested in working at, at a tech startup. Um, right when I graduated from college, I was looking at investment banking and stuff like that, but I felt I could add more value to a tech startup. So I got into software sales, started as an SDR, worked my way up to like a senior manager of business development. Um, and then I re I left that company. Um, the company was called Empire. We were doing like advertising uh, technology, so ad tech. Um, but I was able to connect with some awesome founders and stuff like that. I was doing direct deals with like, CEO of like Acorns, Money Lion. I was doing Dave.com. So I got to meet with some really cool people in the tech industry. Um, and then I jumped over to um, a company called Mobivity. Um, and that's where I was an enterprise account executive. So again, selling software. Um, I did that for about eight months and uh, I just kind of got burnt out. I was like, you know, forget this. I, I can bet on myself. I, I, I know how to sell. Um, so on the side, I was doing real estate. I was, I was building social media accounts. Um, so I felt like I had enough there where I could just, you know, jump ship and, and go right into it. So today um, I own real estate. So I have a rental property here in San Diego. Um, I'm pretty big into the vending uh, world. So that's, that's a pretty interesting side hustle. We, we can dive into um, here in a second. Um, but then I also am growing a, a golf polo brand. And then I have like another social media page, where it, which is called Sports and Cervezas, where uh, basically we, we post pretty cool pictures of like, you know, people drinking beer at uh, sporting events. So uh, that's kind of me in a nutshell and kind of what I'm working on today. Yeah. And uh, Quinn's got a few courses coming out as well. Um, so I'm sure that that'll be a huge revenue driver. Eventually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, the vending game's kind of taken off as like a, um, a pretty strong side hustle for me. Um, the way I view it is it's a good way to cover your base expenses, right? So you think about like your, your, your rent, your car payment, all that good stuff. It's semi-passive, so you don't have to work every single day. Um, and yeah, it's able to cover my base expenses. So I'm coming out with a course for that to teach other people how to do that. Um, I was actually pretty lucky. My mentor in the vending game, he had about 1,600 locations, so he's he kind of showed me the ropes, and now I'm taking it off full steam ahead and have a course coming out on that. And then I also have a course coming out on um, helping people actually land nine to five jobs, but you know, like six figure jobs in the tech industry. Um, I kind of cracked that code in terms of how to get um, interviews at a high clip. So trying to trying to spread as much knowledge as possible. <laughs> um, how like so right now you've. Um... You've grown your personal Twitter like quite quite uh, heavily. I think you're at well like two or three thousand followers now. Yeah, I think like nearly thirty four hundred now. Thirty four hundred. So like, I mean thirty. I mean I'm here sitting now like I think just a hair over three hundred. So thirty four hundred yeah. is about ten x what I have. Yeah. Um, what so like this whole show is about uh, growing social media, uh, analyzing trends. Like how do you? figure out content to post about and how do you grow your Twitter? Yeah. So that's a really good question. I, I kind of learned by just testing different things by myself. 
um, like not really taking feedback from others, um, really just like trying to figure out like, hey, what, what do people like on here? Um, and I would say, so when I first started out doing Twitter, I had obviously no followers, right? Um, and I saw some other people posting like motivational stuff and um, I, I've always been in, you know, pretty interested in helping others. So I started doing that as well. I started scheduling tweets out. So I go at Starbucks, grind for like, it, it would literally take me like five hours to just come up with like tweets for the whole week, right? I was trying to post like two, two to three times a day. Um, and I was involved in like a Twitter engagement group. So there's other individuals that will recruit you to these engagement groups. Um, the only problem with that is they, they really wanted me to retweet a lot of things. And, and also I'd, I'd say the second downside of that is um, they'll, they'll start liking your content, right? And you'll get artificially inflated numbers when, you know, the general population, that's not necessarily what they like to hear about, right? So did that for a little bit and then I kind of stalled out. Um, and then where I started kicking it into high speed is, is posting more about um, shit I'm doing. So I, I think in, in Twitter, the, the biggest thing on that space is it's not like Instagram, right? Like you can't just fake a life, right? Um, you really got to show people um, that you're making moves, right? So I posted a, a, a relatively viral tweet. I think it got like maybe like 500 likes, but not, not, not too big, but uh, kind of big. I think it got like maybe like 90,000 impressions um, about my first property and right. Like how shitty it looked at first and then how I redid it and, and, you know, all the sweat equity and stuff like that. And, and people loved it. So I was like, okay, I'm onto something. But the thing that I've noticed, and, and I think some of the biggest influencers on Twitter, at least in my sphere, are going to be like Chris Johnson and stuff like that. Okay, what, what makes him successful is he's posting about shit that he's doing every single day. Okay, So he's literally buying 500 shares of AT&T and posting, showing you the actual like picture of his buy slip on like E-Trade, whatever, right? So that way people can actually see that he's doing that, right? And I, I picked up on that and and that's kind of why I was so interested in vending because the cost of capital to, to buy one of these machines and get routes and start generating income is relatively low, right? It's much lower than like a real estate property, right? Real yeah. estate is just monotonous. It's expensive. It's, <laughs> yeah, expensive. it's long-term, especially if, if you're trying to manage the, the, the renovations and stuff like that. Like it's like a three to six month process, right? And then you got to go through banking and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, let me figure out something where I could be making moves all day, like all the time. And I could just be feeding content all the time, right? So that's where vending came in. And, and I'm looking at a couple of different things that I could do just to, you know, just to be making moves all the time. I, I would say that they just really need to see you actually doing it as opposed to you talking about it. Because I think I see a lot of people tweeting about things that they're doing, but not necessarily showing social proof. And that is going to stunt your growth a lot. So basically, like, I guess a few takeaways from for the audience is be authentic, actually show and document with what you're doing on Twitter, at least. Okay. And, and do you do you like, what times do you schedule tweets? Or like, do you still continue to schedule tweets? Do you do threads? Yeah. Okay. So that's another good idea. So, so threads are actually, I'm seeing a lot of traction in threads. People are growing their fan base quite a bit through threads. Um, I currently don't schedule my tweets just because I'm managing a bunch of other things. Um, so I'm pretty much just tweeting kind of like what's going on in my life. If I buy a vending machine for a good deal, I'll post that. If I get a good route, I'll post that. If I, you know, et cetera. So I don't, I don't have them scheduled out per se, um, today. Um, but one thing that I did see, um, I think the I think the guy he does uh, he he manages Morning Brew's Twitter account. Oh, and Austin Reef. I, I or it's either Austin Reef or it's someone else. But Kobe, yeah, I think something it's like Kobe or something. But anyways, um, so he actually he actually unraveled like you know all his insights and learnings from like how to get explosive growth on Twitter. Um, and one thing that he noted um, that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, number one, yeah, scheduling your tweets. Um, but number two is, is adding value under big influencers, like, you know, their tweets, right? So Elon Musk tweets something, right? And then Morning Brew will comment right underneath it, like some interesting thing. And, and then a bunch of followers will, will, will flow into that, into, into their funnel. So that's a really powerful way. And I, I've kind of like, you know, started doing that more and more. So I'll see, I'll see hustlers on there. So you think about Chris Johnson, Todd and stuff like that. I'll just be communicating with those folks and, and kind of who they're linked up with. Um, and, and that's been really successful in regards to, you know, jump starting my Twitter growth. Okay. So I guess takeaway for the audience, another gold nugget is to find influencers in your space 
and uh, respond to one of the, like their Twitter threads or one of their tweets, because in this way you'll show up in the algorithm. Plus, I know that the more people that like that tweet uh, will appear higher on your timeline and it'll have some of that magic timeline juice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, t- Twitter, Twitter. I, I, I definitely like the algorithm better on Twitter than Instagram, obviously, right? If you put a good t- content, like it just has a snowball effect. So if you hit this guy, let's just say Elon Musk puts out something. I mean, the guy's engagement's crazy. He has so many followers. Um, and you put out some, you know, funny tweet or interesting tweet and your Twitter bio is optimized, you know, in the right way um, for people to like, you know, look at you for five seconds and be like, damn, I, I have to follow this kid. Um, then yeah, you're, you're going to be able to pick up some followers as you go. So could you elaborate a little bit more on optimizing your Twitter bio? Like what's sort of your bio? Have you AB tested it? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. So I, I've done a couple of different, um, like styles to my bio. Um, I did like a little quote that I liked and then I, you know, kind of wrote out what I did, um, like transitioning out of my nine to five into, you know, kind of what I'm doing now. Um, and, and today, it's, you know, a little quote of like me transitioning out of my nine to five. Um, I'm in vending. Like I, I pay my bills with vending machines. Um, I build wealth with real estate and, 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 and stocks. Um, and then I do a golf bowl of brand on the side. So basically for me, what, what I'm trying to accomplish there is like, hey, um, if these people have any interest in vending machines, real estate stocks, or, you know, building an e-com brand, they should definitely follow me. And then, you know, I'm coming out with a couple of courses. So I'll be able to monetize on that influx of, uh, of new followers. Yeah. And like, I was talking to cold email wizard or maybe it's black. His name is Daniel. Um, but he was mentioning that, um, that like your, your bio is free traffic. Yeah. I mean, all of that, like if, if you have a hundred people that go to your profile, maybe like one uh, out of a hundred will click on your maybe you have a gum road link or whatever to your courses yeah. that's traffic that's free traffic and then what you can do is put like a facebook ad pixel on that gum road or whatever landing page and then this way you collect that data for free yeah for sure and and one thing that i, that I, I think i see a lot of mistakes um, being made on twitter is is people try to monetize it too early so in my opinion like so here, here's a, a good little nugget in terms of like social media and just Instagram in general. So build the audience first and then sell to them, right? Don't build a product and then start selling to them first, right? So that's that's what I was trying to do on, on my um, sports and races account on my Instagram account where I have people holding up beers at these stadium sporting events, right? So we have about like 5,200 followers now. And, you know, we've been doing it for like three months. So um, pretty good there. But like the goal, like I'm not, we're not selling anything there, right? Like it's just simply putting out good content, people can see it. If they, they love it, they can comment on it and stuff like that. You know, and then once we grow it up to, you know, 10 to 200,000 followers, that's when you start pushing the product. And the same thing can be done on Twitter, right? Like if, 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 you're, if you just have like 100 followers and, and you put out a couple of tweets and it's not like really influencing people's lives, um, like you probably shouldn't be selling a product, right? Like, you know, build up that base, give out free information for a year and then start monetizing. So like as Gary uh, V says, jab, 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 right hook, jab yep. them with free information and then you go in for the upseller for the, for the sale. Yeah, exactly. Cause, cause I think, I think uh, like if you don't have like an email list built out or you don't have an SMS, you know, message like list built out where you can send these people messages directly. Like the only, the only way they're going to buy from you is if they trust you and, and, and they're, they're like interested in what you're doing all the time. Right. Like I get DMs every single day, like, Hey, do you have a vending course? You have a vending course, like blah, blah, blah. Right. But I don't really promote my nine to five, even though I have a nine to five course, right? Like it's just not applicable to those folks to buy it for $50. Right. But though I could probably put out the vending course for a hundred bucks and they buy it. Right. Because they see me making moves, right? Like I, I give out free information all the time. I'm showing like people like where to buy these things, um, like the apps to use, like how to structure sales, all that stuff. And, and now they trust me. And, 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 and from there, it's just going to grow. Yeah, that's some solid information. Um, so build value first. What would you say is considered enough social proof? Like, is there like a follower count? Or how do you gauge that? Um, that's a good question. I don't think I've quite figured that out yet. Um, I mean, obviously, to me, I think engagement is better than follower account. 
you have a hundred followers and you're getting 50 likes on your tweets, like you're, you're doing something right. Um, cause I see a lot of people out there with like 20,000 followers and they get like 15 likes on their tweets. Um, so that, that's definitely not good. Um, I think, I think once you start getting, uh, let's just say you get a, let, let's just say you're, you're doing a specific niche, right? So like for, for me vending. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'll give you a good example. Okay. So I put out a tweet right when coronavirus hit. Okay. And this, I, I offered free, um, free resume help, right? Resume and cover letter help. Okay. Like I literally got like a hundred people hitting me up on my DMS uh, about this service. Okay. So I, to me, I was like, okay, there's, there's, there's the context and the proof that there's, you know, people, they have an appetite for this course. Right. So I built a course and then now I'm messaging them and sending them the course. Right. So same thing with the vending, right? Like, um, get, I've gotten hit like probably 200 DMS, um, about this course. So I know that it's ready to rock. Like I'm going to have those sales there. Cause the last thing you want to do is put in, you know, 20 hours, build out this, you know, two hour video course and you get like a sale right? Because then you lose momentum. And I think that's where a lot of people, you know, start to give up on things. If you don't have momentum, then you just, you know, kind of like, ah, this isn't worth my time. Yeah. I mean, well, like the thing is that like people have to stick with it for a little bit. I mean, people will give up way too easily. And like, what advice do you have for them? Um, so I, I don't know, at least for me, um, I'll, 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 I'll be constantly testing. Okay. So testing words on Twitter, like different words to use different like subjects. So, you know, obviously stocks are hot right now. So test all these different ideas, right. And then figure out what works for you and then build off that, right. Like don't stick on something for, I don't know, six months. And then if you're getting no traction in it anywhere, don't just keep building on it, at least in regards to Twitter, um, like your specific niche, if, like you'll know once you found that niche that people are, are hungry for. Um, like it, it's just your follower count will start increasing exponentially and people will start messaging all the time. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I found that like if a bigger quote, bigger a, yeah. account uh, retweets you, you'll get an influx of followers. Like I think, That's I think funny. you may have retweeted me. It was a selfie with my first property that I bought. Oh, it was really? a six unit. Yeah. And I had 145, 150, something like that. And like overnight it doubled. Like I kept, I kept getting sp not spammed, but like I kept getting notifications and my yeah. phone was blowing up, which was awesome. Yeah. That's a, it's an awesome feeling. Yeah, no. And that's, that's a really good point. So like kind of the strategies that I'm using right now, there's, there's two other big players in, in the vending game, right? So it's, it's Todd, um, I think it was like Todd Millionaire or something, and then Brother Graham, right? They both have like 27,000. I think Brother Graham has 21,000, Todd has 27,000 followers, right? Anytime I do anything venue related, I'm tagging them in that post, right? If they retweet me, I'm, I'm picking up 100 followers, like instantly, right? Like the my last tweet, I put out like a video of all the cash I collected in the month. So I think I had like $2,500 in ones, right? And I tagged like Brother Graham in this. I'm like, I'm coming for you, big dog. He retweeted that. All his followers are seeing that. I'm getting an influx of DMs. Hey, teach me, teach me, teach me. I'm like, yep, I got you. Course is coming out soon. I mean, that's 50 sales right there, right? And then I get 300 followers. So, yeah, definitely start using that strategy. Um, if you see other big players in that space, um, you know, create a healthy competition, right? Like, hey, if, you, if you're into stocks and you have a, an account for $1,000 or whatever and, and you're making some big moves, call it the big dogs. And uh, ride their ride their coattails for a little bit until you uh, you become a big dog yourself. So that's some that's some very good advice. Um, I guess like some of the takeaways as we're starting to wrap up is uh, interact and engage with other larger players. So if you see some if you're at a thousand followers, you see someone with a hundred thousand, keep tagging them. If they retweet you, if they quote retweet you, that's excellent, and you'll probably get an influx of followers. To, oh, how question, how do you identify trending topics to write about or to tweet about? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I think I, I, Twitter, Twitter's tough to, just because like my following base is, is very optimized to like what I'm looking for. So like outside of that, like I'm not necessarily looking for, but in, in my specific sphere, like I'm interested in finance. I'm interested in real estate. I'm interested in business. Okay. So those are the people that I'm following. 
So for people that are, are looking for, um, you know, these specific accounts, my recommendation for them is, is to write down, you know, five things you're super passionate about, right? Five things that you can literally, you know, get on the phone with somebody and talk about for, for three hours, right? And then, you know, start following people that are in that space and, and then, you know, continue to follow them and, you know, tag them, you know, interact with them uh, most definitely, right? On every single tweet they're putting out, you know, interact with them, you know, be on their radar screen. Um, and then, I mean, eventually you'll find yourself as, as on the top of that niche. So those are some tips for how to find your niche. That's some additional value right there. Yeah. Um, and like everyone that you talk to on social media, I think that a lot of people are so obsessed with like the whole followers number. And frankly, to me, I mean, I'm a small, small fish. Um, followers, I think, are a very vain metric. Uh, and people should be more focused on creating genuine connections. Yeah. Because ultimately, like, that's what the DMs are for. It's to solidify your friendship. Yeah. Like, Quinn and I will DM all the time. Like, I'll send him a tweet. Like, maybe he'll send me something. or, um, But that's how you keep in touch. And then the DMs, like, it's another pipeline, or it's another stage in your funnel where originally you follow each other, you'll comment, you'll like, you'll they, they'll follow you back. You exchange a few DMs. Maybe you hop on a Zoom call. And then now you're in the friendship fun or now you've reached the end of the friendship funnel. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's a really good point. So I noticed on your Twitter bio that you um, included like DMS are open. I would definitely do that, but DMS are open to followers because a lot of people would DM me that are not following and they would, I would respond to them and they would not follow. And that was just, I think that was kind of annoying to me. Uh, so I would definitely include that. But yeah, like you said, like when people are DMing you, give them free information. Like that's, that's how you establish their trust because if they trust you, you're going to be able to sell them something. So. Yeah. And like, I mean, there's like, there honestly, information is available all on the internet. Um, we live in the age of information, but like people want very um, thorough, concise and organized information. And that's where the value of a course comes in. I have a yeah. bunch of people asking me, Hey, you're 25. How did you uh, buy a house in a different state? I, I live in California. I have properties in uh, Ohio. And people ask me like, but then just give free information and who knows, like maybe you'll end up with conversations with people who are in a similar space, but they know way more and yeah. they can help you out in both regards. Yeah. Definitely have an open line about that. I mean, don't, don't sit there and be like, oh, I'm too good to like respond to these DMS. Uh, I'm sure like once you get massive, like you'll have too many DMS. So it's just like impossible. But as you go and as you're building, like establish those strong connections through the DMs. Like that's, that's the place to be connecting. Take it offline. I mean, like, I, I'm, I think I'm following maybe like 300 people on Twitter, right? Like if I pull up to these people's city, I could probably meet up with any of them. Oh right? yeah. And speaking when it, I go to see like you, <laughs> <laughs> not during COVID, but <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I guess what would your top three takeaways from this conversation be for the audience? Like what would you want to leave them with? Um, yeah. So I think number one is, is always be testing, right. Um, um, build, build an audience before you sell, right? So give out, like I said before, give out free information for a year, okay? give out six months, whatever timeline you, you need to do, give out free information, add value to people's lives. Right. And then, and then I think, um, the last thing, um, it, well, I, I guess, I guess those are my main two. I, I wouldn't have a third, just, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think I'd wrap it at those two. Okay. And where can people find you? Yeah. So on Twitter, it's going to be Quinn J. Miller. Uh, pretty easy. My name is Quinn Miller, middle name Joseph. Um, so you can follow me on there on Instagram, um, Quinn.j.miller. Um, I have a couple other um, accounts on Instagram. If you guys want to check them out, I'm building a golf polo brand. It's called work.play.golf. Um, the company's called workplay, workplay golf. Um, and then my other um, Instagram page is going to be sports N. So just the letter N cervezas. Um, so yeah, check those out. Um, and you guys can follow me on the journey and yeah, anytime you guys want to connect, just let me know. Cool guys. Well, thanks, uh, Quinn. We really appreciate it guys. G give Quinn some social media love. Follow me. My, uh, Twitter is at this is guy 12. Give me some feedback, share this podcast, wherever you get it. And we'll, uh, we'll have you guys on for another episode of social media today. Thank you. 
Thank you for listening. Uh, this is Mohit. I'm signing off. Please rate us five out of five stars on wherever you get your podcasts, whether that's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Stitcher, whatever it is. Thank you, and I hope that you have a great day. Please sign up for the beta at socialcycle.io.